So we're starting off with this uh, agricultural development topic for geography. Let's first of all understand what agriculture is and what sort of industry agriculture is. So Pakistan, or even generally, if you talk about the industries, there are a total of three kinds of major sectors, the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary sectors. The primary sectors are all those industries that are concerned with the raw materials. The secondary industries are those that are concerned with the development of those raw materials into finished products. For example, maybe the cotton industry, you use cotton to, um, to do basically uh, make textile products, clothes and everything. And then the tertiary sector is related to the services. For example, the education services, the tourism, healthcare, so all these hospitals, the schools, the universities, um, the um, ho hotel management services, all of these are basically the tertiary industries. Agriculture is a primary industry. It is a primary sector industry that is concerned with the raw materials and development of or further processing of the raw materials. So what is raw material? Raw material is anything that is available in its original form for the industry. And you further, and okay, so at times you use that raw material in its original form and then um, for the industries, at times this raw material is further processed into uh, value added products, into finished products, yeah. So the inputs, they fall into, I mean, raw material is one of the major inputs for the agriculture, agriculture sector. And generally we classify the inputs as two in, into two major categories. Number one, the natural inputs and number two, the human inputs. So we're talking about the inputs of the agricultural sector here. Natural inputs are all those factors that are obtained from nature and they affect the agricultural production. So you, I, I think I don't have to exactly write these down. You, you guys must probably be knowing these uh, definitions that natural factors, natural inputs are all those that are associated with nature directly and they affect the agricultural production. Human inputs, on the other hand, are involved in the I mean, they're related to the economic se sector mostly, the money you invest, the machinery, the equipment, the skills, the attitude, the workers, the labor, so all of these factors are human. For natural, we can just, I mean, I can write down a few examples here. Um, land, soil, climate. So these are all the factors that you naturally uh, use for an agricultural industry. Whereas human factors may be capital, that you need for an initial investment, uh, labor, you need um, machinery. Labor is also synonymous to skills or the attitude of workers towards particular industry. All right, so now there are a further of um, three types of farmings. When we talk about agriculture particularly, the agricultural sector, there are a total of three types of agricultural practices in Pakistan. Number one, that is a small scale subsistence farming. Number two is the cash crop farming. And number three, it is the livestock farming. So guys, the subsistence farming is basically small scale farming where most of the crops are generally grown for the household purposes. People consume the crops domestically within their homes and they're not uh, sold economically. So the, whereas on the other hand, the cash crop farming is for commercial purposes. The crops grown as part of a cash crop farm are usually sold in the markets locally and at times they're exported as well. Livestock farming is associated with animals and the products you obtain from animals. All right, so now if we look at these three types of farmings in detail, they have their own sets of inputs, the processes that take place and the outputs that we obtain from these three sectors individually. So I'm gonna make three columns here. Number one, for a subsistence farm. Number two, for a uh, cash crop farm. 
and number three for a livestock farm. So both of these three sectors are within themselves three proper full-fledged industries uh, of agriculture. Subsistence farming is, I mean, as, as we've already talked about it, related to small-scale farming. Um, let's see the inputs. So obviously, you need land. I mean, if you want to practice agriculture, even for, on a small scale, you will still need land, right? You will need soil. You'll need a suitable climate. Um, you'll need water for the growth of the plants. And if we talk, these are these are all the natural inputs. If we talk about the human inputs, you would definitely be needing uh, draft power for the um, flowing of seeds and for the uh, uh, the flowing of land. Draft power, whether through machines or natural animals, uh, I mean that's basically a further choice for the farmers. Irrigation systems. You need seeds for the plants, um, then labor. Yeah, so these are all the human factors, human inputs that are needed for a subsistence farm. And labor is mostly family members. So for a subsistence farm, because it is a small scale level of farming, people don't really, they don't really have enough capital to afford workers to work for the farm. So most of the family members themselves work at subsistence, subsistence farms. So family members are the workers there. Uh, okay. Now, after the inputs, the processes that take place. At a farm, first of all, you need to plow the land. Plowing is, we call it in Urdu, hal chalanas, I mean, but so you must have seen that before sowing a seed, uh, a land is prepared for that. Uh, yes. Yes. Before the seeds. Farmers, they try to, first of all, uh, plow the land in a manner in, in proper horizontal vertical lines uh, to prepare the land in a proper way and then they sow the seeds. And after sowing, they irrigate. So second step is sowing of seeds, then irrigation. Irrigation is to basically provide uh, water for the germination process to take place. Yeah. And then fertilization, fertilization, uh, fertilization for the seeds to grow into plants properly, then weeding, threshing. So these are all the milking in terms of the animals. If let's say you're practicing in livestock farming, breeding. So these are all the processes that take place on a subsistence farm. And after these processes, the outputs that you get are in terms of rice, wheat, rice crops, wheat crops are grown on subsistence level, maize, vegetables, people, vegetables are the most common type of crops grown on a subsistence farm. Uh, meat in case of animals, milk, eggs. So these are all the products that are obtained um, after a small scale subsistence farming. So we've studied the subsistence farm as a system as a whole. The inputs, the processes, the outputs. Guys, is there any question so far? Anything that's not clear? Hmm. Everything's clear. Should we move on then? All right. Cash crop farm. Now, a cash crop farm as a system. Again, it's going to have some similar. Uh, inputs, I am going to just underline those inputs that are there for a cash crop farm as well with red color. Land, you need that. You need soil. You need climate. You need water. Then proper irrigation systems. 
you need um, okay so here you will also need machinery so i'm going to write the elements that are unique to cash crop farm under a list under this heading cash crop in red so machinery is needed as as part of the inputs human inputs uh, you need very skilled labor form it's it, because it's a formal working sector you should need proper workers to work uh, at these farms and you'll also need pesticides and insecticides to protect these crops all right and for the processes processes are all the same similar yeah and outputs are also similar except for a few you will i mean cotton is not grown on a subsistence farm but on a cash crop farm then sugar cane is grown at, uh, at a large scale cash crop farm because obviously nobody wants to uh, plant sugar cane for the domestic purposes it's 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 such a heavy crop that it's mostly planted for commercial activities um then oil seeds tobaccos all of these are unique cash crop farms now livestock farming let's just keep it on hold for a while we're going to come back to livestock farming after we study subsistence and cash crop farms in detail so we're going to look at the individual crops now the agricultural products of both the subsistence and the cash crop farming we're keeping on hold the livestock farming for a while because that is a complete different sector within the sector of agriculture so we're going to come back to it later after we study these subsistence and cash crop farms in detail so now we're talking about the agricultural products so agricultural products number 1 is wheat the major agricultural products in pakistan number 2 it is cotton number 3 it is rice number 4 it is sugarcane these are all the major crops all right and as these major crops we also study a few minor crops in pakistan such as maize millets tobacco and other fruits acha so guys for this i'm going to share these notes with you that have really good explanations and details of just give me a second uh of all these uh air crops individually i will be uploading these notes on the drive as well after we're done with the lecture just a second okay can you uh, i hope you guys can see the screen now the notes for agriculture so this is all that we have done these uh, agricultural systems in terms of the subsistence cash crop farming and everything we are now talking about the types of crops here particularly yeah so here are all the details So now, if you focus, we're talking about wheat as the first major crop. Actually, before that, yeah, there's one thing that we've missed: types of crops. There are two major types of crops grown in Pakistan. Number one, the rabi crops. Rabi crops are all those that are cultivated in October and November and harvested in April and May. So the crops that are cultivated in winters and harvested in summers are called rabi crops. whereas the crops that are cultivated in summers and harvested in winters are known as kharif crops all right so cultivation is when you basically 
plant a crop and you sow the seeds, you, you, you allow it to germinate, the crop grows into a full-fledged plant and harvesting it when you obtain the products from that crop, right? So rabi crops, cultivation is in winters and harvesting is in summers. Whereas kharif crops, cultivation is in summers and harvesting is in winters. Wheat is a rabi crop. You, you, you cultivate wheat in winters and you harvest wheat in summers. So, okay, so it's used for the manufacturing of bread, baked products, right? Um, so plowing is first of all done in October, November, because that is the time when the seeds are sown in directly into the soil. Uh, that is the time of cultivation. Irrigation is done first month after the sowing of the seed and the second irrigation takes place further after one month. So as you plow the land, you sow the seeds and right after one month of sowing, one, the first irrigation takes place. And after another month, you could say the second month after the sowing, the second irrigation takes place. Why do we rely on irrigation? Because rainfall is not adequate. Rainfall is the natural source of water supply. And when rainfall isn't dependable, isn't adequate enough, you, 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 you automatically will have to rely on these artificial source of water supply, such as irrigation. So the, the areas where wheat is grown, uh, especially in summers, Pakistan experiences less rainfall in summers, except for this monsoon rainfalls that we're experiencing these days in, in July and August. So except for these particular seasons, uh, during this, most of the most of the summertime, uh, rainfall is pretty less. And that is why we have to rely on these artificial sources of water, such as the irrigation. Uh, all right. Now, approximately four times the water is needed. Last irrigation takes place one month before harvesting. So after these four irrigations, you harvest the crop and harvesting is done after five to six months of uh, sowing the seeds. So wheat takes five to six months to grow properly. And what is harvesting? You basically separate these grains from this material called shuff. Shuff is basically a, a seed that is attached to, or, or you could say the container of that seed that has the grains, you basically uh, obtain that grain of wheat from that shaft and that grain is stored in the storage facilities and that is then uh, sent to farms and markets for, not farms, but markets for selling purposes. Yes, Amna, do you have a question? Yes, sir. can you explain the irrigation system again? Like the, yeah. the raining system. Yeah, so basically rain is, rainfall is a natural supply of water and irrigation is an artificial supply of water. You depend on rainfall when, if let's say your country has an adequate amount of rainfall within that particular season. Pakistan experiences different types of rainfall. We have done these types in climate. You can also refer to the notes of the second topic, climate, to uh, understand the types of rainfall we experience in Pakistan. Uh, roughly, there are the monsoon winds, the western depressions, the convectional currents, the relief rainfall, right? So the areas where wheat grows are th th those areas, the plain areas along the greenest plains, they mostly experience rainfall. Those areas experience rainfall, rainfall in terms of the, at times, the winter, de uh, uh, western depressions, most of the times, the monsoon winds, right? So because if you, if you see the uh, weather of Pakistan currently, we're experiencing this monsoon season of rainfalls in Punjab, in upper Punjab areas, in the Punjab plains areas, yeah? So that is how you rely on rainfall. Except for these seasons, except for the particular seasons of rainfalls, we don't really experience enough rainfall for these crops to grow. And wheat requires a lot of water because you see, uh, you need to irrigate it four times after it's after the seed is sown. So in, in circumstances like these, when rainfall isn't adequate for a plant to grow, you will have to rely on these artificial sources of water supply. And irrigation is one of the best modern techniques to supply water to these crops because it's fast, it's cheaper, it's easily developed. I mean, you, you can develop it very easily in Pakistan because this country has a lot of potential of underground water supply, of water supply from these river, river, rivers, especially River Indus that flows throughout this country. So you can definitely transfer that water from River Indus and its tributaries to the farmlands. So we have a lot of potential for the growth of irrigation facilities. So this is why you, you rely on irrigation as an artificial source of water supply. I hope this is clear. Yes. All right. So, yeah, I was telling you, you basically transport the grain from this plant to the markets because that is the product that we use. That grain is further even exported to other countries. It is used locally within Pakistan as well. 
Um, and you can obviously improve the production by increasing the facilities such as mechanization. You can use modern machines to increase the process, to increase the speed of this process. Modernization, you can use fertilizers, heavy yielding, but HYVs, guys, this term over here, uh, HYVs, just a second. Sorry. Heavy yielding varieties. These are the types of seeds. Heavy yielding varieties. So these are the best quality seeds that you can have and they grow. Uh, I mean, and they require less water fertilizers to grow. Use of chemical fertilizers, modern methods of farming, government incentives, loans, incentives to the farmers. You can use pesticides and insecticides to protect the crops. This is how an agricultural production can be boosted. You can use all of these to basically increase the production of wheat. Uh, let's look at the geographical uh, factors, requirements for wheat. The rainfall that you need is must be around 200 to 500 millimeters. Temperature 10 to 20 degrees Celsius at the time of sowing in winters. This is the average temperature that you need. At the time of harvesting in summers, you need a temperature of almost about 25 to 30 degrees, which is moderate to warm climate. Soil must be fertile. Alluvial is the best quality of soil that can, can be used. Land must be flat. It must be well drained. And obviously, you need a good amount of sunshine for the photosynthesis to take place. So these are all the geographical requirements for a wheat crop. Guys, you should know these requirements because at most of the times, you are questioned on these requirements in the exam paper. You can note this down. I will post these notes in the group as well. But for now, you can. I would, I would definitely encourage you guys to keep writing the notes because uh, you, you really get, uh, I mean, you really understand the topics well once you engage with the content that's displayed on the screen, all right? So keep writing things down. All right, moving on. This is a picture of wheat crop. See, these are, let me just point out the grains. Guys, these are the shafts. Okay. And there's the seed inside these shafts. All right. This is a leaf of wheat. And then you obtain, when you, when you harvest, you basically cut these off. You cut these. Um, this is the segment of the plant. And then you obtain the seeds from within this, these shafts. Just a second. All right. Wheat is a crop system. You can just ignore this because we've already started these crop systems. Um, high yielding varieties. Okay, these are some of the names of the HYV seeds that, that can be used. Shahan, Wadnak, Posan, Maxipak. So these are all the seeds that, can, that are available in Pakistan for these uh, agricultural productions. Wheat is grown in Punjab, areas such as Bahawalpur, Faisalabad, Multan, Chalkot, Chahang, Gokala, Rahim Yar Khan, Portover Plateau, some areas of Rawalpindi as well. Sindh province, Nawab Shah, Khairpur, Mirpur Khas, Hyderabad, Khyber Pakhtun Khan, Areas such as Peshawar, Mardan, Swabi, Kohat, and Lochistan, such as Nasirabad, Jafarabad, and Khuzdar. So these, so wheat is grown all across Pakistan in all the four provinces. You can just know two to three places from each province, just so you can use these in your answers. Guys, remember, adding the names of places, examples, locations really makes your answer very strong. Okay. So that's very important. Now you can see a few questions as well. State the natural inputs necessary for wheat production. Explain. So you just have to maybe write three to four inputs. If you write flatland, explain that. Fertile soil, explain that. Temperature, explain that, right? So this is how you explain the inputs. Explain how human inputs have contributed to the increase in wheat production, machinery. It basically accelerates the entire process. Chemical fertilizers, they, again, boost the agricultural production. Uh, you can talk about all of the other factors as well. Land reforms, carbon prices, plant protection programs. Yeah, but you also have to explain. Every answer that's given in these notes is just the guiding points, a sort of marking scheme. But 
the elaborations are completely on your own. So you, you need to elaborate each point while, while you write an answer. And that is how you get the marks on, okay? Okay, so this is a graphical question as well. Guys, if you see, the x-axis basically tells you the types of crops in different years. This black one, if you look at the, the black bar, this, this black bar represents the year 1980. The one with the lines represents the year 1990. And the one with the dots represents the year 2000. So, and the y-axis is the production in million acres. So you're given with the production of these crops uh, for the year 1980, 1990, 2000, wheat, cotton, sugar cane, and vegetables. And then you will be asked questions about this. For example, the question could be, tell us the production of wheat in the year 1990. So you see, it is approximately 20 million acres. Similarly, you might be asked to tell about the production of vegetables in the year 2000. So this is the graph that represents the year 2000. You look at it across the y-axis. It's around maybe one, two, three, four, one. Uh, one million acres, yeah? So this is how you answer these questions. Achha. See, how many million acres of, if, of, of wheat were grown in 2000? So you look at the graph, you tell the value. Why is an increase in wheat production important? So because of increase in population. Wheat is the major source of food supply in Pakistan. We use these, use this crop to produce uh, the uh, bread, uh, all of the major food uh, products that we use in Pakistani houses. Lack of food, decreasing imports, decreasing expo increasing export to and foreign exchange. And then so if the production of wheat increases, you can definitely export that wheat. And as a return, you'd get more foreign exchange, yeah? You can reduce the imports depending upon the natural sources grown in Pakistan. Yeah, these are all the importances. And then there's another graph you guys can study this graph on your own. The notes will be there available to you. Let's move on to the next crop, rice here. Okay, rice is a kharif crop, a crop that is uh, cultivated in summers and it is harvested in winters. The exact opposite of the rabi crops. Rice. Seeds are sown into nurseries or beds, first of all. And when the plant reaches the height of nine inches, then the sampling is transplanted in a field that is flooded with water. You guys must have seen these rice farms full of water. Have you guys traveled across the, from Islamabad to Lahore, maybe through motorway? Have you guys seen the Indus plains in the rice crops? Any one of you? I mean, if you guys have had a chance to uh, see these rice crops, you would have seen how flooded these fields are because they require a lot of water to grow. And those fields are basically for the plants that are usually grown in nurseries. And after reaching the height of nine inches, they're then planted into those flooded fields. Until the harvesting, you need to keep the rice flooded off with water. Uh, Look at the geographical requirements. You need a level land, again, because of a lot of water, alluvium soil. Temperature at the time of sowing it must be 25 to 35 because that is the summer season. And then harvesting, it must be, they haven't written the temperature for harvesting here. It must be around 10 to 20 for winters. Rainfall, heavy rainfall, because obviously you need more water. 2,000 millimeters is ideal. Uh, rainfall for four to six months is essential because rice takes four to six months to grow. So throughout that time, you need water. Yeah, so you need rainfall throughout that time. The types of rice seeds are area park and basmati, the high yielding varieties. You would have heard of these names in the homes, in the houses as well. The best quality of rice available. And this is a picture of the rice crop. Production areas, Punjab, Sialkot. In Punjab, you could, I mean, uh, Sialkot, Gurjah, Malah, Shekhupura, Jhang, Faisalabad, all of these are areas are within Punjab. Sindh, Tarkana, Shikarpur, Padin. Yeah, and similarly, a few areas of Balochistan as well. Uh, but rice is mostly grown in Punjab. Why? Because of rainfall. Sindh, the production is less because, I mean, the areas of Sindh, such as the Shekhupura, Shikarpur, Larkana, not Shekhupura, sorry, Shikarpur, Larkana, they, they experience lesser rainfall all, all around the year. So this is why the production is lesser over there. 
and then unless obviously you rely on irrigation facilities. But again, irrigation is also not really developed in the same things as compared to the systems of irrigation of Punjab. Explain why the cultivation of rice is labor intensive. So why is it labor intensive? Why do you need a lot of labor for the cultivation of rice? Because first of all, the plant is grown in nurseries. You need to take that plant from the nurseries to this uh, field. Those fields must be plowed. Those fields must have a lot of water. You need irrigation facilities. You need a lot of fertilizers, right? So this is why you need a lot of labor for this cultivation specifically. So guys, we're keeping our lecture till this crop. There, is, there are a few questions that I want you guys to attempt. These notes will be available on uh, the Google Drive as well. So if you can maybe attempt, can you please note these questions down? First of all, question 13 is from, I don't know what page is this? This is page number, yeah. Page number 13, question 13, question 14. Can you please note it down? Question 13 and question number 14 on page number 13. And question number one, two on page number 16. Question three and question seven on page number 17. 